Hey, welcome back to reading through the Bible in the King James Version of the Bible. I'm in Psalms chapter 150 this evening. So if you have your Bibles with you, wherever you may be, please turn to the book of Psalms chapter 150. And I'm going to be reading through this really quick because it's only six verses. So let's read together. Psalms 150. It says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. And that would be you. If you have breath, you can praise the Lord. And why should you praise the Lord? Well, you should praise the Lord because God created you and He loves you. He wants you to be His child. And so let me encourage you to praise the Lord. Let me also encourage you to get to know God. And maybe you're wondering, well, how in the world can I know God? You can know God because God says in the book of John, it's the Gospel of John in the New Testament, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that's Jesus, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent his Son not into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You can be saved. Now, maybe you're wondering, why should I be saved? What does that mean to be saved? Here's the deal. We have all sinned against God. God has a holy and righteous law. It's called the Ten Commandments. And at some point in your life, you have broken God's law. You've violated His law. Maybe you've lied. Maybe you've stolen. Maybe you've cheated. Maybe you've disrespected your parents. Maybe you've been an idolater. Maybe you've been a blasphemer. Maybe you've had sex before marriage. Maybe you're a drug dealer. Maybe you're a murderer. Whatever sin that you've committed, you have violated God's law. And you're accountable to Him. One of these days, you're going to die. Your physical body is going to expire. And your spirit, your soul is going to stand before God in heaven. And God is going to judge you based on your works. And He will condemn you because you've broken His law. And now, maybe you're concerned. Maybe you're thinking, yeah, I've broken God's law. And what's the punishment? The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that the wages of sin is death. It's eternal separation from God in a place called hell, the lake of fire, okay? And when I say eternal, I mean forever. God's punishment is forever. And maybe you're wondering, why is his punishment forever? Because his law was not made to be broken. His law was not made to be violated. You have violated an eternal law, and so there needs to be an eternal punishment. But here's the deal. God loves you. He doesn't want to punish mankind. He wants you to be in heaven with him. He wants to forgive you and save you and set you free. And that's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ. He sent his son to pay the penalty for our sins. See, only a holy and righteous God could pay the penalty and the fine for breaking a holy and righteous God. God came in the flesh. Jesus was born of a woman. He lived a life that was perfect and sinless for over 30 years and he came to preach and teach the message of the gospel that God came to save us and then he died on the cross he paid the penalty for our sins he bled and died so that we can have salvation and eternal life not only that he was buried and then he rose again three days later and that's what's so amazing see death couldn't hold Christ because he's God Death couldn't hold him. And he took the keys to sin, death, and hell. He had victory over the devil. And he gave us his victory so we could be born again and have eternal life. Like it says in John chapter 3. So if you have listened to this brief video and you've been wondering about who God is, about how you can connect with God, and how you can praise him, like it says in Psalm 150. Let me encourage you to make Jesus your Savior first. And connect yourself to God. Then, once you have repented of your sins, 
you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you believe he died for you and rose again the third day, now is when you can start praising and worshiping God and saying, Jesus, you're my Lord and Savior. God, you are my King. And God, I want to get to know you. So now you start reading the Bible. Now you start going to church. Now you start talking to God. It's called prayer. And you want to get in connection with other Christians. Start fellowshipping with them. Start asking questions about what the Bible says. About how you can know God better. About how you can grow in your relationship with Him. And you are on the greatest journey you will ever be in your entire life. You will have salvation and eternal life. And more than that, you'll have a relationship with God that will last forever. Because God has a place waiting for us in heaven. And it's amazing. Well, that's been it for reading in the Bible. And that's it for me. I'm out of here. God bless you all. Thanks for watching. And thank you for tuning in again to Reading Through the Bible in the King James Version of the Bible. Take care.